Welcome everyone to another episode of the Mental Health Hour, right here on Twitch. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, we will be uploading all the replays as usual to YouTube. We are currently on um, episode 52 is all the way up and loaded. Am I first? Indica, Alice, yes, you are. Chrissy Katz. Good to yes. see you. Good to see you in here. Mm -hmm. Hello, hello. Welcome to the broadcast. Tonight, uh, episode 53, yeah. we are discussing caregiver syndrome. This is um, a viewer requested episode. As we like to do those, we mix mm -hmm. them in. So, uh, as always, please feel free to reach out to us on the bio link that's on the screen right now. Good evening, Hattie. Good to see you. Um, but yes, feel free to reach out at bio.link slash cmhh and scroll about halfway down our links page there and you'll see um, episode request or submit an episode request. Mm -hmm. um, and it is quite easy. It's just a Google Doc. It comes right to us. And we shuffle those ideas into the mix as long as we can um, safely and adequately do an episode on uh, whatever is suggested. Mm -hmm. Um, I haven't, I don't believe there's one that's come through yet that we've had to turn down or, and when I say turn down, I don't mean, um, like for, you know, poor reasons. I'm looking more at our, uh, Gemma and I's together group of knowledge base. Mm -hmm. Yeah. On it, um, wouldn't want to discuss something that we weren't comfortable with in order to potentially give out misinformation on it, right? Um, yeah. I'm not, I'm not comfortable. I'm comfortable talking about anything. I just, uh, mm -hmm. I, like, like she was just saying, I, I don't want to give out misinformation. Um, like tonight's episode, for example, on caregiver syndrome. Um, I don't know a whole lot on the subject. However, um, I've talked with several people, my mom included, um, who have had uh, issues with this in their uh, current lives uh, or past. Mm -hmm. um, for instance, my mom was recently, uh, well, I guess it's been a few years now, but um, taking care of my father and my grandmother, her mom, at virtually the same time um, as they were both sick and um, reaching hospice care, I think. Mm -hmm. So we'll get into that a little bit. Um, I had a good talk with my mom. Um, and uh, yeah, there's gonna, this is going to touch a lot of people. Um, Chrissy already throwing up there. Mm -hmm. uh, my dad is a lifelong caregiver. Um, yeah. Those of you that don't know Chrissy, she's an awesome friend. Uh, we did a broadcast together with Joseph Burke on his channel about chronic illness and chronic pain and chronic, you know, just chronic illness in general and living with it. Uh, yeah. So uh, that is actually... I did upload that to our YouTube page under more content from the hosts. Mm -hmm. uh, so if you fancy taking a look at the broadcast from Joseph with me and Chrissy Katz on there, it is on our YouTube. Just follow the bio link. Um, I think that's when I was away, but I, I remember catching it. But yeah, definitely yeah. one to watch. Yes, it was a good one. Mm -hmm. um, Joseph Burke, you know, many know him. He was a guest on this show, episode 25, um, and he had a pretty powerful episode. He's just an all-around Will. 
diverse speaker um, and, and definitely draws in a good uh, crowd as far as followers and um, his story it itself is pretty amazing. Um, so plenty for you to check out on the bio link there uh, in the bottom of the screen or on the bottom of the screen. Um, uh, so much content, all the complete series of episodes over on YouTube mm -hmm. from my first go live experience. Um, in the pilot episode up to today's episode. I'll have that posted tomorrow. Mm -hmm. um, that being said, don't forget, please check us out on Twitter, Instagram. Um, I don't know, do we, have, we don't have Instagram, but Twitter, Facebook, all the major socials. Again, all in our bio link there. Give us a follow, give us a like, give us a share. Uh, yeah, we've added TikTok to the um, equation now as well. Ah, uh, yes, Gemma has been working on a TikTok. I'm not very TikTok certified. Um, I know, I know how to scroll through mindlessly for a couple of hours. <laughs> I think but, we could uh, all do that one. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but anywho, again, welcome everybody. Um, it's good to see you guys. All the live viewers trickling in, and hello to our replay viewer fan base. Um, one other thing we'll be venturing into soon, Gemma and I have been talking about it for quite some time now, but haven't actually pulled a trigger on it. But I really, now that we're in a place <clears throat> where uh, I feel like a lot of what we had started is off our plates, like the website and such, um, we want to look into Anchor, uh, Spotify, all that mm -hmm. stuff, trying to rip the audio, which in talking from some folks doesn't sound that difficult. Oh, I did it the other day. It was really quick, really straightforward. Yeah. So um, Anchor, I heard great things about, and I think Anchor will then allow you to um, multi-stream that to Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and all yep. that good stuff. So I'd love to get involved in that game because uh, it's great to have the visual of me and Gemma on screen, and we love the live connection. We love the the uh, the live audience, the chatters, box, and and everything. Um, however, the information that is given on this show um, is is certainly transferable to an audio platform. Um, for later viewing. Sometimes it's a little easier to throw in some AirPods at the gym uh, and listen versus try and watch on an iPad or something like that. Um, so just more things uh, for the mental health hour coming down the pike, more growth, uh, which is what we love. And we're uh, definitely always growing with our fan base. Um, and the Discord channel, of course, is our favorite. Uh, as Hattie has dropped that for us um, mm -hmm. right there. So please feel free if anybody, uh, Chrissy, um, I know you're uh, relatively new to our broadcast. I've seen you, you know, you knew what I did. Yeah. Um, you know, Gemma and I did this show, but um, please feel free to uh, check out the Discord and join, it, join up. Great uh, community of people. And uh, yeah, that's my opening spiel. Gemma, how are you doing today? Um, it's been a tricky one, not gonna lie. Um, it's one of the things that I'm very open about. Like Thomas was at clinic today for his bloods. He's at a clinic tomorrow and providing he is fit and well, they're gonna remove his central line in the coming weeks and months which means the cancer treatment will really be over for him, apart from the next five, six years worth of tests to make sure it doesn't come back. <laughs> but uh, he decided to have a very, very public meltdown, of course, earlier, which was terribly embarrassing. But um, other than that, we're not too bad. It's going. He's not asleep. The one night this entire week that he hasn't been asleep before, I, and it happens to be tonight. It's 
Wednesday night. It's Wednesday. We we joke. I laugh at Gemma every week. Wednesday is her toughest day of the week. If we yeah. thought about switching this show to Thursday nights or something, which we're not going to, so don't. No. Um, then maybe that would. Now then Thursday would just become the no, toughest. No, he, he just change it. It's like he knows. Even if I don't tell him I'm doing it, but when he's awake, I have to because like I'm like, don't come in my room. Just one hour. Just no. Good afternoon. Good evening to Danny Bruno. Good to see a ray of sunshine in the house. I think he just finished up a broadcast. Um, keep your eyes peeled in the um, the chat in the box there for. Uh, I do have a banner for him. Ray Sunshine with our Frey. friend Ray. There's his Twitch handle. Catch his streams Mondays and Tuesdays 7 um, and Wednesdays at 4. Positive, uplifting things. But um, our mod Hattie in the chat has all of that good stuff as well. And she, there it is now. Uh, she'll be posting that for your guys' pleasure as we move along. Mm -hmm. Um all right, I think we got a good bit out of the way. Like I said, it's great to see everybody. I am exhausted today. Um, mm. Penelope has been doing wonderful as far as going through the night. She has a bottle around 10 o'clock p.m. here, Eastern time. And then she normally sleeps until 3, 4 o'clock. She's been making that long stretch because normally we feed her, she's she's pretty punctual about every three hours. So during the day, it's every three hours she's getting a bottle. But she's transitioning into that nighttime phase where she knows that it's night and we sleep. Um, but the past two nights, we have had a uh, struggle bus because we have had to take her out of her, or we've had to discontinue using um, her swaddle. Mm -hmm. um, she loves that Velcro swaddle. It's her nighttime get up and it just, it helps her sleep really well. Well, we visited the orthopedist on Monday for a uh, follow up to uh, some clicking that they heard in her right hip. Um, she does have mild, very mild hip dysplasia, very common. She was a big baby. So, uh, she was scrunched up in the uterine, in, in utero. And uh, it's so it's very normal, nothing to be concerned about. But they did want to discontinue um, the swaddle so that basically the way they explained it, if you ever see a puppy lay on its back and it goes spread eagle, they want her to have that freedom because that's what she needs right now to help develop. Mm -hmm. um, um, the swaddle, of course, brings her in nice and tight, and that's counterproductive. So getting used to sleeping without the swaddle has been, I was up pretty much all night last night. You can get a swaddle that will go between the legs and up the top only. Yeah, we're looking into we're looking into that. Uh, I think mm -hmm. he's actually, my wife, she's looking for things like that. I had to do it for Thomas. Yeah. So other than that, I mean, she's not going to be in a swaddle much longer anyway, so it's not a huge deal, um, and she's getting more used to it. But uh, yes, anywho, that being said, hit our uh, hip dysplasia. <laughs> yes, I'm tired. Uh, caregiver syndrome, that's what we're here to talk about tonight. And uh, oh, uh, Chrissy Katz throwing down some sham shamrock love. Appreciate that, Chrissy. Um, very awesome. Mm -hmm. and it's good to have you here, like we said. Uh, she was also born with uh, hip dysplasia, it looks like. Yeah, they said it, it's very common, very common, so nothing to worry about. Um, but other than that, Penelope is not, she's not in any discomfort, she's very happy. Um, and we are just loving life with her. Um, so, <laughs> um, but it does actually segue us into caregiver syndrome because while I don't have, I mentioned at the beginning of the show, I don't have um, as much background or knowledge about caregiver syndrome. I'm learning a little bit more about it by having a, an infant 
uh, that requires 24 hour attention. Um, that is a, a life changing thing as anybody that has a kid uh, and has gone through Gemma, you know, uh, most of you in the, in the chat know uh, what it is to have that infant phase and it's very demanding. Um, mm -hmm. You lose your social life, you use, um, they become number one as they should be. And it quickly puts mom and dad and whoever in the back seat, mm -hmm. um, which is essentially what we're looking at with caregiver syndrome. Um, yeah whether you're taking care of um, an infant, but more, more um, appropriately uh, for the, um, the coinage of the term, what have you, uh, we see it a lot with uh, um, live-in either spouses or children um, or whatever that are incapacitated or not mm -hmm. maybe necessarily all the way incapacitated, bedridden, or anything like that. But um, Gemma, like in your case, you have Thomas who needs uh, a certain special care at all times mm -hmm. and more um, monitoring. Uh, mm -hmm. So I know I'm sure we can speak on that as well as we move on. But what I'd like to do first for those of you that are fans of the show and know we roll we have some slides and i usually save those slides so about halfway whatever we do a little banter about mm -hmm. but i figured this one would be good to jump right into and get some background um i apologize there's a lot of information um gemma's gonna read it off for us but mm -hmm. uh slides themselves are kind of busy but they were really good um, so it might be hard to see on your phone, computer, um, or what have you, but we will, as always, post these in the Discord. I mm -hmm. highly recommend uh, following up with them because there's a lot of great information. And with that being said, I'll throw it to Gemma now, and we'll yeah. start off with just the anatomy of a caregiver. So what is yeah. it? Okay, so we'll start from left to right. So 18% experience a financial strain, 60% of them are female. The average age of a caregiver is around 49 years old. Uh, they've been given, they've been caregivers for an average of four years and 22% say their health has gotten worse as a result of caregiving. And on average, caregivers spend 24 hours of a week providing care. And then across the board at the bottom, Monday through Sunday, there's like a shower, yeah. m medical, um, like phone calls, things like that, I guess. Different uh, things you have to remember at all times. Yeah, Just food, driving. Helping people shower, helping people, <laughs> yeah. you know, with diapers, um, getting them mm -hmm. to their doctor's appointments, uh, putting up with their... Um, they're, they're a lot of times they're not in the best of headspace because mm -hmm. they've been dealt a shitty deck of cards or, or a shitty hand. Um, so uh, they, their mental health is, is a lot of times, unless they're born with it, you know, uh, with some issue and that's all they know. But if they were living 30, 30 years of their life and then got into a motorcycle accident or something and now are paralyzed, that's a, there, there's going to be a bit of a chip on the mm -hmm. shoulder. You know, I can't do the things that I used to do. So you definitely, as the caregiver of this person, get a lot of backlash and attitude sometimes. Um, and I just wanted to throw out that <clears throat> um, uh, it's not just home care, like wife, husband, um, children type things as we've been alluding to currently um, of course it also falls into uh, nursing home nursing home care hospice these type of things where it's your round the clock job as well um, but anywho a lot of times it takes away from social lives and and such uh we were just, Casey, my wife, was just reading 
um, an article. I don't know where she found it. She, she gets into these interesting Facebook wormholes and mm -hmm. found a video about what it is to be a royal nanny for all these royal babies that were born over the past uh, two, three years. Mm -hmm. The requirements to be a nanny for these children are out of control. It no social media, uh, disclosure agreements. You're living there 24 seven. You don't have a social life, etc., cetera, et cetera. Um, Hello, Jim in Chicagoland joining us. Our good friend from Catalyst over here on the Twitch network. Um, and Hannah, good to see you. Uh, Tracy, I see is here as well. TJ, uh, and TJ. TJ. Yeah. Good, good to see TJ, our good friend uh, from a long time now, um, who I'd love to have on the show if we could ever talk him into it. <laughs> but there's a lot, of, a lot of you I would love to have on the show that uh, if you ever get the uh, courage uh, or whatever the case may be, um, mm -hmm. the means to be able to come on the show, we'd love to have you. Um, so awesome. Uh, anywho, moving on to the next part of that slide, um, we're looking at the anatomy of a caregiver. Yeah. Okay. So again, six in 10 caregivers are employed and more than half of them are full time. So that is in addition to the caregiving that they're doing at home. 28% of caregivers have a child or a grandchild under the age of 18 living in their household. One in three have no help at all, uh, paid or unpaid. An estimated 43.5 million adults in the US have provided unpaid care to an adult or child in the prior 12 months of these and 34.2 million provided unpaid care to an adult age 50 or older. And then 22% of all caregivers say their care, res uh, care recipients suffered from Alzheimer's or dementia. Yes, yes. Um, of course, those two, Alzheimer's, dementia, um, they affect uh, anyone and everyone. Um, mm -hmm. there is a, uh, I, I believe that is a hereditary, um, it can and, be, uh, my and, dad has it. And mm -hmm. I think it can pop up in more places than one. Um, yeah. so, um, if there's any questions or comments, um, on these slides, please feel free to drop it in the chatters box. We love communicating and talking further about this. If you have any uh, questions in particular about a certain thing. We can always go back to the slide um, as well. Um, nine ways to reduce stress for caregivers. Um, this is um, this is one of those things. Um, I always, when I'm doing research for the show and finding some slides, I like to find a few slides on what the hell we're talking about, mm -hmm. and then ways to mitigate said issues. So this is one look at nine ways to reduce stress for, for caregivers. Yeah. Okay. So this is healthy habits, strong connections and resources that are all important for the well-being of caregivers. So first one, um, and we say this for everything mental health wise, stay connected to others. Sharing experience with others can help caregivers manage stress, reduce feelings of isolation and recognize that they are not alone. Caregivers should find someone that they can talk to about their feelings, like a therapist, a fellow caregiver, clergy, friend, or family member. Support groups, support groups, support groups. We talked about it a lot last week. Support groups are king um, or queen in, yeah. in this day and age, as well as, as we always say, and I think we can touch on it when Gemma hits practicing self-care, Mm -hmm. or meditation journaling again but go ahead. no 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 worries right so seek seek and accept help so speak up when you need support or assistance join a support network help can come from community resources online support forums local groups and professionals 
consider getting help to manage meals, transportation, social activities and services to assist with other daily needs. I think the main thing here is there is no shame at all in has asking for help. Uh, Tim has disappeared. We will carry on. Uh, get educated. So it can help to talk to medical staff about options that are available for every stage of ageing or disease. We are still live, aren't we? Yep. Area agencies on ageing, ageing and disability resources centres, ageing info and referral services and other programmes are trusted community links to information and services for older adults and their caregivers. If anyone needs any resources and things, I I actually have quite a few that are based over here in the UK, but I can absolutely get some more for the US and have some really good things that might help, such as um, timetables, journals, things like that. So all those things. But definitely another way to plug the Discord as well, because you can guarantee there's going to be at least one other person in there that's going through the same thing. So even if it's just somebody that you want to reach out to and speak to somebody else, just sometimes I certainly find it a lot more beneficial to talk to someone that's been there, done that, got the T-shirt kind of thing, um, because they're speaking from experience. Anyway, find respite solutions. Get a break for a few hours, a few days or even longer. Respite is offered in or outside of the home in a community or out or hang on in a community or faith based agency or organization an adult daycare program in a hospital or in a healthcare facility a nursing home assisted living facility or adult foster home family members friends or neighbors may also be able to offer support and act as a respite provider if you're burning the candle at both ends especially if you're working as well. Or even if you're not working and you're full-time looking after someone else, if you're burning the candle at both ends and not looking after yourself, you are not going to be able to look after somebody else if you are so worn out and not getting any, any time off whatsoever. Even if it's just an hour every so often, it really does make a difference. Certainly. It is... Um, mm -hmm. That's basically... A lot of what we're looking at here um, is is uh, burning that candle at both ends. Mm -hmm. It's uh, it can get to be a bit much for the caregiver mm -hmm. themselves. Um, however, keeping in mind that you know most, uh, I, is it fair to say a hundred percent of the time? the person that is in need of care mm -hmm. didn't ask for this, didn't, would, wouldn't wish this on you. Um, mm -hmm. And it's probably sorry that it has to be this way. Um, yeah. I can't, I, I struggle to think of a time where it would be, um, you know, not their fault um, and they're not doing it out of malice or anything like that. But I could be wrong and feel free to, Hit us up, as always. Let me know what I'm missing, um, and yeah. we can continue on. Yeah. Okay, so practice self-care. Don't forget to participate in enjoyable or relaxing activities. Partake in social outing or hobbies, such as art or other creative endeavor. Read a good book. Listen to music. Watch a movie or relax in a warm bath. Regular self-care is a must for caregivers. So it doesn't have to be anything that costs money, just something, just something for you that isn't related to anybody else. It's just something that you can do to take time for yourself. Um, but such as having a bath, as well as it being relaxing, it's also looking after your hygiene as well. So, you know. Yes. Um, exercise regularly. So a quick 10-minute walk outside can help and improve mood offer fresh air and a change of scenery daily exercise breaks can change a hectic pace and mindset yoga and stretching can also relate uh, relax the mind and reduce the feeling of overwhelm and stress one thing that 
I find I found good from personal experience with Thomas. Even when he was unable to walk, he had a wheelchair and sitting him in a wheelchair, going for a walk myself, pushing him in that wheelchair and just being able to get out of the four walls mm -hmm. made a whole heap of difference for both me and him. So and even this... uh, going for a walk and taking them with you in such as a wheelchair or a scooter or something. And just this is a perfect place to uh, drop in a little uh, dime of wisdom from my mom, my conversation with my mom earlier. She found herself, as Jim is saying here, my stress buster as a caregiver, live streaming. Uh, everybody, it's very important that everybody has uh, something, some form of escape. Um, like I said, you're doing so much for others. Jim, uh, we all know Jim's story. If you're a fan of this show, he's been on back in episode 11, uh, very similar to Gemma. Mm -hmm. And uh, as well as um, most of you in the chatters box tonight in our conversations with one another have expressed some way, shape or form that they either uh, give care or have care given. Um, so again, another reason to join that discord with us. Um, and we're, we're still working on the Twitter community, um, but the discord really is a place, a safe place for us. It's highly moderated and it is just a good community for, uh, for us to come together and talk about these things. Gemma, continue, please. Yeah. Okay, so stay healthy. Reactions to sleep, uh, reactions to stress can include a lack of sleep, overeating, undereating, increased alcohol consumption, and smoking. Be aware of the detrimental responses and receive good health checkups to ensure good health practices. And that's for the caregiver as well. Like, what well, this is based on for the caregiver. Yes, yes. But you have to make sure that you are healthy in order to make sure that you are being able to give the best care possible to who you're looking after sure um keep a positive perspective so striving to maintain a positive outlook can make a real difference writing in a gratitude journal or simply choosing to focus on the good in daily situations can help to reduce negative thoughts and feelings resulting from stress or overwhelm uh, we say every single episode i think journaling really helps yes. even if it's like in an actual book or an app even if it's just a few words it, no it's not an essay nobody's marking it it's just for you yep. to get the feelings from here and from here and to take them out and put them down in a positive way and certainly like we've said uh along with those lines uh journaling isn't just pen and paper mm -hmm. uh, you can do a live vi uh, video blog. You can do a blog, a written blog. Yeah. You can do live streaming like Jim was talking about like this. Um, I believe earlier we were talking about sharing experience. Uh, that's what we're doing here. It's just yeah. that, that this is all forms of journaling. Yeah. And I've seen people do TikToks every day. They'll go on and just give like a sure. quick... 30 second clip of how they're doing what they've done things they're grateful for it can be anything there's no right or wrong as long as it's something that you enjoy doing it doesn't feel like a chore mm -hmm. and it's helping you then why not all right uh the last one for this slide meditation and breathing practices so there is ev there's increasing evidence that mindful meditation can help he can help put my teeth back in sorry can help ease psychological stresses like anxiety depression and pain an effective relaxation method developed at harvard medical school involves deep breathing exercises and i actually am in the process of making some of those for the channel so awesome watch out awesome awesome mm -hmm. um taking a look briefly at some of those and getting into maybe some First chat, we'll get back to some slides. Um, I have two more, if time permits. But that mm -hmm. was a really good look at. Those first three were the ones I wanted to get through. Um, so I mentioned I was talking with my mom. She was giving care to my, my father and my grandmother. Her mom uh, 
you know, as they were both at the same time um, reaching their illnesses. Uh, my dad had lung cancer, COPD, and my grandmother was in her 90s. Um, so they were reaching the ends of their lives and she was um, she was the caregiver, uh, just her. Um, some things that she mentioned, she had help. Uh, my sister, one of my sisters lived really close, so she was able to come over. My mom was able to get out of the house, do some stuff for her, clear her head, go shopping. She loves doing that. And she mentioned one of the things she caught herself doing a lot was cleaning, uh, cleaning the house, scrubbing the floors, dust, um, just to stay busy, essentially. Mm -hmm. and, and while that sounds boring and nothing I would be into doing, it was just for her. You know, it was her thing. Uh, my mom has always kept a clean house. She was a stay at home mom and she uh She's good at that stuff, and, and she finds it relaxing, therapeutic, and uh, rewarding to see, to look back after scrubbing the floor or dusting, and to mm -hmm. see the work you've done and the progress you've made and how clean everything looks. That was her thing. Um, but as far as uh, I did ask a couple of questions um, in the lines of when. Uh, my grandmother, my, my dad passed uh, and my grandmother was still alive for a bit longer and she was transitioned to a nursing home. I mm -hmm. asked was that to uh, get kind of her, for lack of better words, it sounds terrible and it's not, you know, you're going to know what I mean, but to get her out of her hair. Um, mm -hmm. it, it's not, She said that wasn't the case at all. It just... Uh, my grandmother got to the point where she, it was just too much for one person uh, to constantly be um, there. Mm -hmm. She needed to call in help from nurses, uh, home care nurses, to help her maneuver and do things. And overall, she was getting a better, um, um, she was getting better care yeah. at the nursing home. So there's yeah. options there. Yeah. If that's the case. Mm -hmm. There is options to look at for help, um, especially if you have people that live close by, family members. Um, and then um, that was, you know, we, we, we also just discussed uh, resentment. I asked her, do you feel like you ever built any resentment um, with the uh, constant caregiving? And my mom said, absolutely not. Um, this was one of those things Badger makes raiding with a party of eight viewers. Thank you so much, Lindsay. It's good to have you guys here. Welcome to the Mental Health Hour. We are a weekly uh, series here on Twitch every week, Wednesday at 6 p.m. Eastern Time, 11 p.m. UK, as that's where my co-host Gemma is. Mm -hmm. Welcome in. We talk about one aspect of mental health. Uh, per week. Today we're talking about caregiver syndrome. Um, so welcome, enjoy the show, uh, follow, like, subscribe if you wish, and we're glad to have you here. Um, but getting back to my mom, I asked about resentment. She said she never felt any resentment building. Um, there was, like I said, always help. Um, and you know, my mom and my dad were married for 43 years. So there, I mean, there's the love there, too. She said, if anything, she felt a little guilty after he passed that he did not see um, or that she didn't spend enough time with him. Um, now, that's just her story. Things There's other things to look at with people that are in abusive relationships over it. Like I mentioned, there's the chip on the shoulder. Oh, my life's not what it used to be. Or I had this alcohol problem. Or it's not my fault. Um and then they take that out on you. That becomes abuse, verbal abuse mm -hmm. um, to the caregiver because I can't do things myself anymore. And then that takes a lot out on them um, in a way that uh, seriously affects their mental health. And you start to see that resentment building for why am I doing this shit for you if you're just going to treat me like a dog's ass? Mm -hmm. So... 
looking at it, um, we, we talked about it last week on last week's episode. Resentment is a breeding ground for piss poor mental health and relapse and everything. Mm-hmm. It's just uh, something that needs to be kept in constant check. It's what we do in AA. I'm in, uh, for those of you that are joining us from the raid, I'm in active alcohol recovery. Um, and I've done the 12 steps of AA. I continue to do service work. And, um, you know, I have to keep my resentments in check. It's like one of the number one priorities in this program. Um, resentments are, like I said, the breeding ground for piss poor mental health. Mm-hmm. And can, can, I could easily slip back into a relapse over resentments that I'm bottling up. Um, so anywho, that's a brief little synopsis from me. I wanted to throw to Gemma to maybe talk a little bit on her end with her dealings with Thomas uh, mm-hmm. growing up and then we, it, we can get back into another slide. Yeah. Um, so for, just to, for starters, like, cause obviously I have my own physical condition, so it makes that a little bit more difficult in that sense, but With Thomas, I became a single mom just after his first birthday. Like, I think he was a year and four months. And he was diagnosed with, he got really bad sepsis at the age of two and then diagnosed with the cancer at five. I, like, there's times where I think to myself, I would never change having him. And I wouldn't change anything about him. I would change the situation. And it's made me question a lot. It's made me question faith. It's made me question why why us? Why him? Why me? Is it is have I done something? It's been exhausting to do that and to try and take care of my own physical and mental health. Um, to the point where I've wound up in hospital myself a couple of times because I had just exhausted absolutely everything I had. But um, I think resentment-wise, the only thing I resented was the fact that, and I'm going to be blunt with this, that it takes two to make a child. Where's the Mm -hmm. other party? That's the only resentment I had. How does he get to walk out of my life, walk out of his life and just live his own life? That was the only resentment that I had. But then I think back to the fact that he actually wanted to be a carer for me, which is where the um, things that happened. I can't talk too much about it legally because there's things that I can't discuss with it. Sure, sure. But there was a lot of control and coercion and things with that. And he had literally filled in a form to say that he was a carer, forged my signature, things like that. And um, luckily I found out when I did because that was a very abusive relationship in many ways, not just like physically. I think that both Thomas and I would be in a very different situation if sure. we had stuck around. But yeah, because not only time, not only is that uh, uh, taking away from you as a caregiver, but mm-hmm. it's also putting strain on Thomas, who doesn't know oh. what's going on really, and already mm-hmm. going through so much, um, just added stress. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, and it, it's hard. There are times when I think about what would my life be like if and I play out different scenarios and different situations none of those don't have Thomas in it anymore because he is a part of my life and even though I was told I could never have children I wouldn't ever consider my life without him and he has been my protective factor for my self-harm and recovery in that sense however I do question what life would have been like 
if he'd have had a father that was active in his life. Oh, Even if we were together. And like, yeah, I just think... Oh, like, help, help for him. For Ultimately, help for him, but also, also mm -hmm. help for you as the caregiver. You're now a primary yeah. caregiver. And, oh, yeah. Yeah, that's a lot. Because there's times when I've been poorly and I thought, well, you know what, I can't actually go and lay down and go to bed or go and rest or go and take a bath because... He needs me, and um, I've had to absolutely exhaust everything I've had, waiting up late till he's gone to bed, and then by the time he's in bed, I am absolutely knackered. So all I want to do is go to bed. I haven't done the housework and stuff that I've needed to do because I've been looking after him all the time. And then I start feeling like a bad mother, a bad carer, a bad everything because I haven't managed to do everything I should have. Yes. And I'm sure I'm not alone out there. And no, that's the beautiful yeah. thing about this show mm -hmm. and and anything mental health group therapy oh, wise is you're not alone. Like if you walked into my house right now, you'd probably think, What the heck's gone on here? How many kids live in this house? Like fifty? <laughs> you'd think that. But I think, I think we can all uh, I think like, we can all say that's I, like, I'd say, you know. Feel free to tidy it up if you don't like it, or you know, don't stay. But um, we've got three kids here okay. and an infant, so four total. And yeah, yeah, it's just you can clean and clean, but it always looks like a bomb went off five minutes five minutes later. And then so. I'll like in one room, and he'll be in the other, and it was tidy before he went in there. And I'm like, oh my god, I just yeah. this one. What are you doing? It is universal. Mm -hmm. um, but yes, so thank you uh, for that. And if any of you guys would love to uh, share any of your caregiver stories over on the Discord, we'd love to hear it. There's a, a channel over there for uh, show topics and uh, discussion. So please, uh, as we've been as we've been saying there, join the Discord. It's really a blast. We have mm -hmm. such a great community. It's growing every day. Um, so many people, as Gemma was just alluding to, that go through the same thing, and we can all share and uh, talk about these things. And a lot of times, I'll throw this out there too, you don't even have to talk about whatever is bothering you. And, you know, having another set of ears there to listen is not always just talking about the hard shit. Maybe we just talk about some hockey or something. We're there. Mm -hmm. Come talk to us. Uh, we're friends. Yeah. It's a great place. Um, it's another way to, uh, another outlet, another tool in the toolbox. And uh, uh, Ray, a ray of sunshine, we've touted him as well. He does some very positive streams on here, positive stories to enlighten your day. Give him a follow. He's been a longtime supporter of the show. Jim in Chicago lands another one. Um, we'll get into the community calendar here in just a bit, but. Um, Catalyst is um, out of this world. Great, great broadcasting for, um, as he calls it, alternative broadcasting or what have you. It's not the normal um, uh, bull crap that we're, we're dealt with, you know, every day. Um, I just wanted to throw this up there. We can run through really quick. Again, it's going to be a little hard to see. Mm -hmm. uh, Gemma, you don't have to, like, read the whole thing. Like I said, these will be posted on our Discord. Yeah. Just kind of skim through and hit some high points that you see. Um, yeah, okay. So caregivers stress, know the facts. So fair to poor physical health, and it says approximately a third of caregivers provide intensive care, and they, are in the, they themselves are in fair to poor physical health. 63% higher mortality rate. Um, spousal caregivers aged 66 to 96 who experience caregiver-related stress. Two-thirds have rearranged their work schedules. The average loss of $23,494 in Social Security benefits uh, is the estimated loss for a caregiver. Depression is the most common psychological disorder uh, 20 to 50 percent of caregivers report depressive uh, disorders or symptoms. Uh, more likely to suffer from anxiety, 
and it says that female caregivers are more likely to suffer from anxiety, depression and other symptoms. Five plus years, so 40% have been providing care for more than five years. 2.5 times more likely to live in poverty, uh, struggle and have like mo just money problems, things that they can't afford to do, struggle in general. And then long distance caregivers spend on average $392 a month on travel and out of pocket experiences. So you're looking at quite a bit of financial strain too, to mm. add on to that. And uh, real quick, on the other side there, what can you do? It is uh, something we've talked about in the last slide to reduce stress and stuff. But just ask for help. Maintain that healthy diet and take a break from work. Um, biggest one on there, support groups. Again, can't say enough about them. Uh, I mentioned it last week uh, and in weeks past. Support groups have really come a long way since the COVID-19 pandemic. Um it, they're available everywhere now. Um, you don't have to search the internet and find one in your area to drive to and stuff. You can literally hop on within five minutes of leaving this broadcast. I'll bet you can find a Zoom meeting somewhere mm -hmm. uh, on the planet that you can join and uh, be a part of a, no a new family as well of people that know exactly what the hell you're going through. And that includes talking to friends and family at the bottom there. Uh, last slide, and we'll kind of wrap things up. Yep. So we have the one. Okay. So we have caring for a loved one can be an honor, but it can also take its toll on the caregiver. Uh, common duties that the caregivers provide to their loved ones include bathing, cooking and planning meals, keeping everyone in the loop, setting up and taking uh, taking them to health visits, cleaning, running errands, packing and giving medication, watching symptoms. And it says caregivers are at risk from depre uh, depression, stroke, heart disease, high blood pressure and other illnesses. And then to avoid burnout, find ways to recharge, take care of yourself, make sure you get enough sleep, set limits so to, it's okay to say no and as we discussed previously it's okay to ask for help establish a support circle seek professional help if you feel depressed and eat healthy foods and there is another um there's another great website there at the bottom uh cardiosmart.org slash caregivers um for uh more information on some of the stuff like uh, that um, section on the right there with caregivers are at risk for depression, stroke, heart disease, all the stress that goes into it, of course, takes a toll on your body. Mm -hmm. um, and it really is a lot about self-care. Um, so while you have a very important task to take care of another human, whether you be, uh, whether it be your career as a nurse or a home nurse, or a hospice nurse, or whether it be um, the cards that your family were dealt in dealing with a sick loved one. Um, there is no shame in keeping yourself in the uh, running as, um, as important as well. Um, certainly, they're going to need um, a lot of help. Um, reach out to support groups, see what other people are doing, go to therapy, go to counseling, journal, 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 let your emotions known, let your feelings known, talk to the other people, let them know how you feel. That's how you bury those resentments. And I shouldn't say bury, bury is a bad word. You don't want to bury anything, but that's how you, I was thinking more like bury the hatchet. Um, yeah. You let the you air those resentments that are building out by communicating with your spouse or whatever the case may be, whoever you're taking care of, letting them know, hey, things are getting a little tough right now. You're being very mean, and I'm only trying to help. Um, mm -hmm. I'm not 
digging it, um, for lack of better terms. I, I'm sure it can be worded a lot better. But the essential moral of the story is to let it know. Because like I said last week, uh, you can't expect them to know exact they're not mind readers none of us are mind readers i'm yeah. terrible at it if my wife is mad at me i have pleaded at her to tell me i'm mad at you and i and this is why because yeah. i'm not the best at picking up on those vibes all the time so again communication is key mm -hmm. resentments keeping those in check is key and self-care is key um and with that being said, that's all I have. Gemma, anything to add? Um, not really. I think um, I mentioned about um, seeing as how it seems to have affected so many people making a specific area within our Discord for this kind of conversation so that there are, um, if you need to speak to someone or reach out for this specific topic, then it might be a great place to go. Um, as I've seen, so many people are affected with this in the chat, and I'm sure there's many more that haven't yet maybe joined the Discord that maybe would like to. So don't forget um, your, for that, just to reach out, you know. Reach out. Don't forget your anchor points. Mm -hmm. um, that, that was something said to me a while ago, and I've held on to that pretty closely. Don't forget your anchor points. Uh, yeah. To be a good carer for somebody else, you have to take care of yourself first mm -hmm. because you can't give 100% or even 50% of nothing if you have nothing left. Mm -hmm. If you have literally burnt yourself out and are on your knees struggling, you can't give the very best and at the end of the day especially when you're dealing with like medications and things like that you need to make sure that you're on the ball and that you are doing things correctly do you know what i mean never be ashamed to reach out and ask for help never be ashamed to say i'm just not coping or i need a break there's no shame in that at all yep. and uh naomi hattie there in the chat hattie are good our good friend, our good moderator, and our helper on these broadcasts is also willing to speak on the mm -hmm. Discord or whatever. She's on Twitter as well um, about her experiences with caregiving because uh, she has some stories as well. So please feel free to reach out. She's opening up to you guys. And that is what it's all about. So thank you all. For joining. I feel like this one flew by, but we are at that hour mark. Mm -hmm. uh, community calendar, as always, at the end of the show. Great supporters of our show. Longtime supporters of our show. Uh, please check out Catalyst mm -hmm. tonight um, with Jim in Chicagoland. We had a fire pit last, last week, which was pretty cool to see. The weather is breaking and uh, getting into the outdoor mode. Um, but normally, if you don't know what that is, um, Jim in Chicagoland does a great weekly broadcast on Wednesdays um, where he just focuses on a candle, a lit mm -hmm. candle or the fire pit for summertime. And you come in and you chat. Uh, there's topics available to discuss. But really, Jim's open for any much or pretty much any conversation you want to throw out there. I've seen some wild questions, um, but he reads every comment and he mm -hmm. takes time to uh, communicate and connect with the audience. Yeah. Very good stress relief, very good middle of the week blues uh, kind of hump day action to wind uh, down for the last two days of the week. Uh, mm -hmm. Ray of Sunshine. As we mentioned earlier, he is also here in the chat. Actually, just underneath that comment is a ray of sunshine 21. Click on his name. Give him a follow uh, if you're not. Very positive, uplifting streams. Great stories. I'm a frequent in there when I can make it. Um, and it is uh, a great 
uh, great, great stories. Just uh, overall good time. Puts on a good broadcast. Um, like to mention our good friend Ella, the Bunny Mom, as well. We talk about her. She has been such a longtime supporter of Gemma and I on this show, the Mental Health Hour in general. She was a guest on the show, and uh, she um, helps. Uh, Bunny Rescues, Worldwide Bunny Rescues. Um, that is her goal, is to rescue every rabbit on the face of the earth. <laughs> um, but no, uh, I joke, it's a great cause, and it's her passion. Um, mm -hmm. which is so important these days. It is her true passion, and it makes her happy. And that's exactly what kind of her episode was about, you know, following your your dream, what makes you happy? Um, it ain't always the high paying job or the corporate life. Um, it, it's bunny rescues in her case. And that is amazing. So join her and puppy cat late nights here on Twitch and go to www.myfunnyvalentine.com. Use my promo code there, fire dude 15. Uh, there's a few more out there. You don't have to use mine, but, uh, for the sake of this show, that's what we throw out there. Fire Dude 15 to save 15% on all port purchases, uh, I believe over $20. But there's so much stuff on there, it's not hard to get that $20 cap. Um, mm -hmm. And it all goes to Bunny Rescues uh, for, for Ella. So that being said, I'm looking from Hattie. I think I covered everything. Yes. Yeah. And um, we are good to go. Uh, Gemma, if you could wrap up briefly with the socials. Yeah. We'll, we'll um, I have a raid for us tonight. Okay, very good. Uh, so, oops, I put the wrong one up. There we go. Um, Hattie's put up the um, Discord there, all the links to the socials, every social that we have, maybe not the TikTok yet, is on there. We just went on TikTok in the last few days. I yeah, also checked out there on TikTok. Um, but I'll put that on the this on the bio link. If you aren't in the Discord, join us on the Discord. Definitely a lot in there. And I'm gonna run a poll on there um after the show. Just something that I'm curious. Um so please pop over and answer that question. It's just a quick quick on. Yeah. Uh, things it helps us to uh, see what our community is what where you know where you come from things like that what what kind of background without getting too personal um the mailing list as well if anyone wants to join that before i send out the first one i keep saying i'm going to send it out but i've been waiting to see if we get a few more on there that is also on the bio link um it will be a monthly newsletter sharing stories um, sharing positivity, sharing things that people in the community have done, anything positive, anything nice, anything light. Yep. Just a positive monthly read. If it becomes popular enough, I might make it more often, but we'll see how it goes. Awesome. Um, but, yeah, and keep the questions coming in if you have anything, on again, on the bio link. We don't just have to read them out in the live Q&As. If you have one specific thing you want to ask, that's in there too. Awesome. Um, but no, I think that's it. Thank you. Thank you, guys. We appreciate you. Uh, we'll see you guys next week for episode 54. Same time, Wednesday, 6 p.m. Eastern time, 11 p.m. UK. We'll put out uh, the broadcast announcement. Stay tuned here. We're going to throw you over to a new podcast I've been following called Nonsensical Nonsense. Um, it is three guys from HAPS. Um, Tony D, uh, you might recognize him. Um, mm -hmm. and, um, Chris Glick and Jeff Hall. They do a fun show. And uh, I want to send you guys over there. So show them some love and give them some follows too. These are good guys. So see ya. Bye.